I'm going to show you how I installed wooden grade crossings. So here we go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovitschak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance and pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And over here, I am working on my module in the corner, and I'm putting in grade crossings. And I purchased some Blair line. I have one angled straight grade crossing and one each of a 23 to 25 inch radius and 21 to 23 inch radius number 127 number 128 and the angled straight one is number 134 i'm going to tell you the advantages of it and the disadvantages of it right here great detail in these laser cut wood grade crossings as you can see in the photos here you will have to stain them or paint them as desired. I used a India ink and alcohol stain on mine. As you can see how they turned out on there. You could use anything that you would like on yours. When glued to the ties, they are flush with the top of the code 83 rail in HO scale. In my application, I use sheets of 40 thousandths inch thick styrene between the tracks as a road surface. On my old layout I used Campbell Scale Model Works profile ties. I have a whole mason jar full of them right here left over and they are half the thickness of a regular tie as you can see right there. They were used when a lot of people were hand laying their own rail. This is the grade crossing I did on my old layout. This, <laughs> this is the section that I cut up from Rockwood. You can see that the gap for the wheels is narrow and everything is up against the outside of the rail too. But on this one here, the Blair line one, you can see how big of a gap there is it doesn't get that close to the rail and you can see the little tabs that hold the rail in place well they get in the way so you can't put this all the way up against there you will have to trim off a portion of the pieces that fit on the outside of the rail so they will fit over top of the tabs that hold the rail in place I sliced out a portion of the bottom to see what it's going to look like. It worked out pretty good down at this end right here because I had it uh, far back enough. But you'll notice as I come up here, I got a little bit thinner. So I just have to shave a little bit more out of there. It's well worth the effort to notch out the bottom as shown here. It's a little time consuming and delicate, but if you take your time, you'll be able to get it. Now, I did cut through the entire piece on occasion, but you just have to glue it back together and put it in place. I use super glue on about every fourth tie to hold the grade crossing to the ties. Here you see the grade crossing with the concrete road surface. I still have a little bit of work to do on this scene. I filled in where necessary with a mixture of plaster of Paris. You could see on the straight track, I left out the outer edge of the grade crossing. This gave me more gluing surface for the styrene since I had to contour the road surface downward. Overall, the Blair line wood grade crossing is a good fit for any grade crossing that you're doing. It just takes a little work to trim down the outer pieces to fit correctly on the outer rails. The hand laid profile ties are a little bit more time consuming, but I think it's well worth the effort to take that extra time to get the desired results that you want. Once you have everything scenic, it's gonna look like the real thing. So you make the decision on which one you want. Whatever decision you make, I know you're going to be satisfied with it. Adding details to that grade crossing is another subject and will be covered in a, another video in the future. So we got a lot of work in that little corner there. So until the next time, we'll see you.